Hello and welcome to the next Crack a Pack episode. Today we're opening up a pack of Amon Ket, a very recent set uh, with some actually really great cards in it. Obviously the invocations, which we are not going to hope to pull, but obviously if we do, that's great. Uh, but there's actually some really good stuff. Hazaret the Fervent is probably the card I most want out of this. Uh, but Gideon the of the Trials, excuse me, is up there as well. Both $35 cards, very, very uh, expensive for standard stuff. Uh, but we are, of course, going to be looking at this from a limited perspective, so we're going to see what we would draft uh, if we were actually in a draft setting, and this was our pack one, pick one. So let's go ahead and get into it. Minotaur Sure Shot is our first uh, common. It is a 2-3 three for 3 with reach. You can also pay 1 and a red, and it gets plus 1, plus 0 oh until end of turn. Honestly, a pretty decent red card. Uh, not anything like super crazy, but it's decent. Uh, the fact that it has reach is pretty relevant. Uh, Jiru's Resolve, one white for an instant, untap target creature, prevent all damage that would be dealt to it this turn. You can also cycle it for two. Uh, cycling's a big part of this, this set, which is great because it means it's never really a dead card. Uh, you can always, at worst, just cycle it to draw into something else. That being said, this is not a good card, definitely not something I would ever pick. Uh, Hecma Sen Sentinels. A 2-3 for 2 and a blue. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. This falls very similarly into the sure shot range of a great 3-drop. Not necessarily a first pickable card, but definitely a card that you would want to see. Uh, Nimble Blade Kenra is a 1-3 for 2 with prowess. Uh, prowess meaning if you play a, or if you cast, excuse me, a non-creature spell, this gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. A decent 2-drop, uh, definitely okay, but the prowess trigger, more often times than not, isn't going to be the most powerful thing in the world. Uh, just because when you're in a limited environment, you're really going to want more creatures than you are instants and sorceries, for the majority of decks, I should say. Uh, so, I like this card, but definitely not up there as a first pick. <clears throat> uh, Cory Holler, a 4-3 four, for 4. When it enters the battlefield, for each kind of counter on target permanent, put another counter of that kind on it. Or remove one from it. Uh, this really deals with the negative one, negative one counters, uh, the green black style deck. Very powerful, honestly. It's not a bad card. Uh, I wouldn't consider any of these first pickable, but definitely cards that so far I'd be looking at. Uh, Unburden, one and two black. Target player discards two cards and you can cycle it for two. I don't mind this card only because you can cycle it at worst, but it's still not uh, really under my radar. Trespasser's Curse, one and a black for an enchant player. Curse, uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under the enchanted player's control, that player loses one life and you gain one life. This is an okay way to stem the bleeding if you're sort of in the enchantment curse style deck, uh, but it's very specific and not really the kind of card that I would like to draft. I'd, mu I'd be much more inclined to have something a little bit more aggressive, uh, like a creature or something along those lines. Uh, final reward is four and a black, and it's an instant to exile target creature. This kind of shoots to the top of my list so far. Uh, it is just a common, but exiling a creature is fantastic. Yes, it's a little expensive, but it is limited, and it is instant speed, so I think the upside is there. Uh, Winds of, Rebu of Rebuke, excuse me, an instant for one and a blue, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Each player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. This is actually a decent card uh, in a blue tempo deck. I don't think it beats the final reward, in my mind at least, uh, because it is a temporary, uh, sort. it's a tempo play. The The final reward is actual removal, so I think I would definitely have the, the final reward over it. Uh, Binding Mummy is a 2-2 two, two for 2. Whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, you may tap target artifact or creature. Tappers are notoriously good. Uh, there is a decent zombie deck in this set as well, uh, so I actually really like this card. That being said, I don't know, again, if it beats the final reward. The only reason I say that is because it does pigeonhole you a little bit into the zombie strategy. Uh, you can just pick up a few value zombies and make this okay, as long as you have, you know, there's, there's sort of a threshold there that you would need to meet to make it worth it, uh, but otherwise it's just kind of a 2-2 two, two for 2, so I don't know that I'd want to first pick it. Uh, now this is an interesting card, Enigma Drake is a uh, star four for three and it has flying and it, its power is equal to the number of instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard uh, this card is really good in the right deck you really have to be in the instant sorcery kind of prowess style deck the two drop one three would go great in this deck 
but it does sort of put you into that, but this is definitely the payoff card for that deck because it can get absolutely massive. Uh, I remember playing this and this deck was good, not great, uh, only because if you remove the Enigma Drake, you're kind of at a loss. Uh, but for now, I'll kind of keep it under consideration. Uh, Deemworthy, an instant for five. Deemworthy deals seven damage to target creature. You can also cycle it for three and a red. When you cycle it, you may have it deal two damage to target creature. I actually kind of like this above all the other cards. Um, and the reason I say that, Final Reward is great because it does Exile, which is powerful, not always the most relevant thing. Um, and Enigma Drake is, again, a great payoff card, but it pigeonholes you into that deck. Deemworthy is really just a solid card in any red deck. Uh, you can also cycle it if you have something that you just want to pick off and you need to draw a card early, so it's flexible, and it deals a lot of damage to a creature. Uh, so, so far, that's it for me. Uh, and then we have Reduced to Rubble. I'm not going to read through all of this, but it does feature Aftermath, which means you can kind of play it after you've played Reduce. You can play a Rubble, excuse me, from your graveyard. I don't like this card uh, for limited, just in general. And our rare, Shadow of the Grave, one in a black for an instant. Return to your hand all cards in your graveyard that you cycled or discarded this turn. Uh, this is really not a limited card. Um, yeah, you might get, be able to get one or two cards back, but it's really not worth it. Uh, and then, of course, our Full Art Planes and our Token. Uh, so the card I would definitely pick is Deemworthy. I love this card. It's hugely powerful. Uh, you can cycle it to get value if you don't really find yourself needing to get uh, 7 damage off on a creature. And it really does leave you open to playing any, any deck that really runs red. Uh, so definitely my pick. Not the best pack, unfortunately, but we did have a couple interesting options. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to leave a like or a comment down below and make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our content. Hope you enjoyed it though. And until the next episode, we will see you later. Thank you so much for watching.